Hello, fellow Rebel Capitals. Hope you're well. So CNBC just comes out with an article saying a mortgage crisis is brewing. Now, in this article, they're talking about several different things, mostly in the in the UK. But we can see the exact same thing happening here in commercial real estate. And if 2008 is any teacher, if we learned any lesson from 2008, it's that what happens with the banking system can bleed into many, many countries. In other words, now, the way the financial system is set up in the global monetary system, there is tremendous systemic risk. So even if a real estate market like the United States blows up, that usually has an impact on other economies. So if the commercial real estate market here blows up, it'll impact Europe, most likely impact a lot of different places. Uh, same thing in China. That real estate market blows up. That could impact the United States. And if the UK market blows up, that could spill over to the EU and therefore to the quote-unquote developed world as well. So let's get into this article and check this out. Then we're going to try to connect some dots here. First and foremost, mortgage catastrophe brews in Britain as millions are pushed towards insolvency. I, I thought they said mortgage crisis, mortgage catastrophe. <laughs> I'll have to correct the title of this video. Key talking points, Bank of England surprise 50 basis point hike. Oh, before we go any further, I also want to point out that in this article, you're going to see how the central planners will most likely approach not just a crisis or catastrophe in the UK, but also here in the United States, regardless of what causes that catastrophe. Well, we know the, the root cause is going to be the government, the central planners and the authoritarians. But how that crisis manifests itself, that is an unknown as of right now. But how the uh, arsonists are going to fight the fire, so to speak, we see that in the, in the way the UK is handling it right now. Again, I'm going to explain this a little more detail as we go down the article. Second key talking point, Finance Minister Jer Jeremy Hunt on Friday met with major banks in the UK talking about the deepening mortgage crisis there. Research by NIESR estimated that the latest rate hike would see 1.2 million UK households, 4% of households nationwide, run out of savings by the end of the year. So what happens over there is they don't really have a 30-year fixed rate mortgage. That's something that's almost exclusive to the United States. So as a result, most of these mortgages adjust every two years, let's say. Now, I don't know if that's exactly uh, what they do in the, in the UK. I'm using that just as an example so you could understand how that would just dramatically impact the overall economy. Just think if every mortgage in the United States adjusted every two years instead of every 30 years. Right? I mean, think about what would happen to the United States purchasing power in aggregate total, the consumer purchasing power over the past couple of years when Powell has taken rates from 0% up to 5%. And mortgage rates, for heaven's sakes, have gone from 3% up to 7%. So obviously that only impacts the people who are buying now. But in the UK, since these mortgages roll over so quickly, that impacts almost every single person that has a mortgage, just like it does with commercial real estate here in the United States. And here's this clown. This guy, the more I, I read about this guy, and the more you hear him talk, the more obvious it is how he is just simply a stooge of Klaus in the World Economic Forum. And it just goes to show you that the global elite, they don't care if someone's on the right or the left. or I mean, this guy's supposedly on the right. Give me a break. Who cares? All they want is someone that's going to toe the line. They just want someone that's going to regurgitate the, the, their narrative, whatever they say it should be. You know, it, uh, Lindsey Graham is a good example of that here in the United States. There's an intensifying pressure on the Britain's government to do more to help struggling households. And here is where you really need to pay attention. Because I've been talking about this, and this is 
absolutely 100% my base case. As far as what the United States government will do when we see this next crisis or catastrophe, however you want to label it. So what Britain is doing here, and this is such a great example of the arsonist being the firefighter, is they're coming in, they're increasing interest rates, but then they know they're causing a problem with people being able to pay their mortgage. So now what they're doing is they're coming in and say, well, we got to increase these interest rates. What we're going to do is we're going to subsidize the mortgages and in, in, in this kind of clever way. So what they did is that Jeremy guy, he sat down and met with a lot of the banks in the UK. Actually, before we get there, let's go to this quote. So I think this is important from Max Mosley. He's an economist at NIESR. So the raise in rates to 5% will push millions of households with mortgages to the brink of bankruptcy or insolvency, excuse me. No lender would expect household to withstand a shock of this magnitude. So the government shouldn't either. So again, what they're talking about here is the fact that let's just assume that these mortgages roll over every two years. Just think about what that would do to the United States. I mean, that would, that would absolutely be a catastrophe. So now we talk about Jeremy Hunt, who's this uh, finance minister guy, and he went and met with all of these banks. So his, Hunt said Friday that three measures had been agreed with the banks, mortgage lenders and financial conduct authority, including a temporary change to mortgage terms and promise that consumers' credit scores will not be affected by discussions with the lender, meaning to readjust their mortgage extended out further. The minister also said that for those at risk of losing their home, lenders agreed to a 12-month grace period, basically a forbearance, where you wouldn't have to pay your mortgage and they would agree not to repossess without your consent. <laughs> I'm sure. Oh, yeah, sure. Take it. No problem. Here are the keys. So you see what's happening here. The government is coming in and increasing interest rates. Why? Why are they doing this? Because they have an inflation problem. Okay. Well, what, what is an inflation problem? It's too much purchasing power chasing too f few goods and services. So if your country or if your economy is financialized, then a lot of your purchasing power or aggregate demand is coming from financial assets, a definition, right? So what they're trying to do is defeat inflation without lowering asset prices. How? <laughs> How are you going to do that? If, if that's the whole point of raising interest rates, to bring down asset prices. If the asset prices don't come down, then how the hell is inflation going to come down? It's, it's, it's just total pretzel logic. So what they're doing is they're saying, okay, we're going to raise interest rates, but then we're going to prop everyone up so no one loses money, no one loses purchasing power, the unemployment rate doesn't go up, no one loses their home, no one takes a haircut on their stock portfolio, no one takes a haircut on their bond portfolio or whatever, right? But yet we're magically going to assume that those rate hikes are still going to bring inflation down. Let me put it to you in even simpler terms. What they're doing is they're saying, we're going to raise interest rates to defeat inflation, but we're going to make sure that those interest rate increases don't have any impact on the economy whatsoever. That's literally what they're saying. So if the government is coming in, and making sure the interest rate hikes don't have any impact, how are the interest rates going to have an impact on inflation? <laughs> this, is the, this is the insanity of central planning and central planners and authoritarians. So the punchline here for those of uh, Americans is you've got to expect this in the United States. You, you have to. This is their game plan. This is their, their, their MO. We can see it playing out in real time, and it's just going to get worse, more extreme. Maybe that's a better way to say it. In the future. So how is this going to play out in the United States? I can tell you it's easy. What's going to happen is we're going to have a crisis, catastrophe, whatever. Fed's going to drop interest rates. 
And then they're going to say, oh my gosh, well, we're going to get inflation again. And then what's going to happen is we've got unemployment. People aren't going to be able to afford their mortgage. They're not going to be afford to put food on the table, blah, 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 because we're increasing the unemployment rate. The only way we can bring inflation down is with a higher unemployment rate. They're going to say, no, 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 no. Problem solved. We're not going to lower, or we're not going to increase interest rates this time because we saw what it did to mortgages last time. We saw what it did to the unemployment rate. We don't want to deal with that. Okay, well, then how do we defeat inflation? Oh, no problem. Price controls. Okay, right. But there's a lot of people struggling out there because of the inflation that we already have had. Oh, well, no problem. UBI. Well, if we give everyone free money, then aren't we going to get inflation? No, we've got price controls. Now, you guys know how insane that is. But that is quintessential <laughs> central planning logic that we'll just stop prices. We'll just make it illegal for prices to go up. And then we can keep the unemployment rate low. Then we can keep interest rates low. And plus, we can give people money. And everyone's going to be rich. And they're going to continue to vote for us. And we're never going to have a problem with inflation. Because we'll just make it illegal for inflation. Why didn't we think about this before? This is genius. Man, wow. Central planner, I'm so smart. I'm going to pack myself on the back here. <laughs> and it's going to lead to an even bigger catastrophe, an even bigger disaster. All right, guys, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. As always, make sure that you're standing up for freedom, liberty, free market capitalism, where loss is just as important as profit. There should be no bailouts, no bailouts for Main Street, and definitely no bailouts for Wall Street. That is the key. It's not capitalism. It's free market capitalism, where people are able to fail. That is almost more important than people being able to succeed. We'll see you in the next video.